Hello and welcome to another episode of SG Crypto. Today we're going to go into what's written here, Flare Network, a full protocol analysis. Now before we start, um, well actually for anything, I just want to give a description of the video. So basically what we're going to do is, and this video is really just for people that are interested in the Flare Network, that plan to utilize it, and just ask themselves like what is so special about this protocol or this network? What what is all the hype about? Why are people so excited about it? And what's what's so new? Um, and so that the, that question will definitely be answered in this first part. This will be a three part series, um, just because this is a longer article. And you know, typically, um, the brain can really only understand information in like twenty five minute interv intervals, most effectively. So these will probably be about fifteen to twenty five minute videos, three part series, and. I do want to give every bit of um, accolades, all the accolades to Greg here. Um, here are all of his links, all of his ads. Uh, so he is a YouTuber um, at Altcoin Evolution. I will leave his links in the description. DAO contributor, so he also works on DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. Um, and yeah, so all the respect to this man. He has taken the time to write this entire article, um, and it's some fascinating stuff. Now, I did notice that he also did make a video on the, this article. <clears throat> I did watch a little bit about it, and I just wanted to kind of break down. Um, and I will also leave the link to this and his YouTube channel in the description. I mean, also a short form thread on Twitter. I will leave that in the description as well. Um, I do want to give all accolades to to Greg here. <laughs> Um, give credit where it's due. So let's get into it. Um, so first, this will just be covering the entire three-part series. So in this first part, we're going to cover these three things here. So what the protocol does, the problem that it is solving, and how it solves that problem with clever tech solutions. Uh, and then just for you guys to know what to anticipate in the future, for the second part, we'll be doing who the investors are, and how the tokenomics will drive demand and supply, why miners and validators are irrelevant, and what replaces them, and how Flare is doing attracting third parties to build on their, ta on their tech. So people that are going to build dApps on the protocol. Um, and then thirdly, will be a summary of existing dApps and their KPIs, what the structure of the team is and the network's governance structure, and wrapping up with the bull and bear cases for Flare. Uh, take a sip of coffee quick. So, this is really just, um, what's this here, a layer one analysis framework. So, basically, just how these kind of protocols work, um, especially in analyzing them. So, first off, the team will develop the protocol. They'll make the decisions on the protocol. And so, from the protocol, you attract investors and get funding for a better token price or just to establish a token price. Um, and from there, you will then start to incentivize and receive miners and validators, which allow for production capital to be brought to the platform and also induces functionality to the platform. Um, and from there, more development resources, which incentivize third-party developers to bring human capital to uh, useful applications, kind of like Sparkle's NFT that we've seen, um, and others will be coming in the future. So, especially, you know, we got to wait for the, <laughs> the network to launch, too. So, the main net. I mean, from those useful applications, there will be more utility for users, which will then bring more users and a bigger community, essentially. Um, and this just comes full circle. Uh, and so, the Flare protocol, it is a distributed network that can be used to create two-way bridges between networks. It integrates the Ethereum virtual machine which enables the network to run Turing complete smart contracts. Turing complete smart, Turing complete, being Turing complete is essentially something that can compute any problem, almost any problem um, effectively. And so Turing complete is essential in smart contracts. And the Ethereum virtual machine, virtual machine just essentially means that we can do anything that the Ethereum uh, blockchain or network can do. Um, and we are a contestant in the great alt EVM wars. Um, Solana and Atom are EVM compatible and utilize that technology as well. So, Flare Networks seeks to solve two problems. Number one, non-Turing complete blockchains hold around 65% of the total value in crypto. 
And number two, proof of stake networks have some issues when it comes to security of network. So we will cover both of those in this video, actually. Um, so firstly, Flare's vision is to unlock the assets that are held in non-Turing complete chains. So if you, and this is where, I mean, it is an estimated value of 65% of the value of the blockchain tokens. Um, that is estimated by Flare. And so let's take Doge, for example. Doge really doesn't have any utility at this moment um, because of the blockchain it is on. And so this, what Flare acts as, is basically just a bridge, a bridge that was never there before. It acts as a bridge from that blockchain to this protocol to then be used in like Flare Farms um, to be staked, to be delegated, um, and so much, so much more. Um, and so that's where that unlock of value comes from, that 65% of value. And this has never been done before. This is totally new. And that is, number one, the biggest reason as to why this network and this protocol is so, so important and so amazing, one of a kind. Um, and so on the launch, the F assets, which is wrapped versions of assets that sit on the Flare networks that will be listed are here as follows. Number one, XRP, Doge, Elgo, Litecoin, XLMs or Stellar and Gala Games. And now according to Greg's calculations, on release, Flare would have an immediate market of 38 million wallets, 218 billion coins, which would represent $82 billion. Um, and what he says here before we go into that is the, to the TVL or total value locked calculations are much more compli complicated than this, but it gives an idea of the opportunity and it really does. I mean, look at this. In XRP alone, that's 3 million wallets. Doge, 4 million. Elgo, 18 million. Litecoin, 4 million. XLM, 6 million. Um, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people that we will be unlocking value for. I say we um, just because I am financially invested in this network and I'm very interested in it. Um, but essentially, all, you know, all props to Flare Network, of course, and the developers. So that's 38 million people. I mean, some people do have duplicate wallets. So let's just say 30 million people. That's a ton. That is a ton of people with $82 billion to bring onto the network. I mean, that's going to come to here. That's going to bring more miners and validators to the system, which will induce more platform functionality, which will allow for more, well, which will incentivize more third-party developers, etc. Round and round, it'll bring so many people to this network, um, and people do not realize that. And these people, the holders of this, aren't aware of that yet either, uh, but they will be. Um, so when the net network launches, the biggest determinant of Flare success, in Greg's opinion, will be how many of the available coins get turned into F assets. So tracking Flare's assets under management will be the one to watch in late 22. So just watching which of those is first to come. Um, so obviously these will be the first to come, but you know, in a matter of time, how fast they get brought on and new ones beyond them. So secondly, and this is identifying the second issue, the team have identified issues with the proof of stake due to the fact that POS or proof of stake derive network safety from their native tokens. Um, let's say crypto.com, for example, they use crypto or CRO, or crypto.com, the coin, CRO, that is their native token and that is necessary for security of the network. Um, so in the short term, this is an issue because of the staking yields. So the yields for staking that native token are less than that of the DeFi protocols on the network. The staker will likely divert tokens away from staking, compromising network security. And why wouldn't you if you're going to make more money somewhere else? Um, and there's no incentivize to keep you there. I mean, why would you? Um, uh, so this is something Flare team stated as a proof of stake network gains usage and the value built on top of it increases. The value of the token must increase or the network will become unsafe. This is really just reiterating this point here. Um, you know, that the, the native token has to have, there needs to be incentive to hold that token. In order for the network to be safe and this is uh you know flare has gone is really the antithesis of that you know they're doing something completely different um and so how does flare solve these issues so the spark token is the native token of flare that is the one we'll be getting airdropped sometime this year and it helps prevent spam attacks and can be used as collateral within dApps, providing data to on-chain oracle and participate in protocol governance 
but importantly, it is not it is not required to secure the network. As it says here, it just helps prevent spam attacks and can be used as collateral. Um, here's just a little infographic of the uh, Spark ecosystem. I can leave a description, I will leave a description or a link to this infographic in the description if you want to look over it. It just kind of just covers the different sectors of it, like dApps. You got Sparkles NFT is one of them, and a couple others will be coming. Uh, here are the three. F or the three uh, tokens you got F or Y Flare, Y Fin, and Y Min, all essential to their platforms uh, or their their DApps within the Flare network. The FTS Oracle, this is just the delegating which we've been doing with XFi. Um, and yeah, so F Asset Agents, that's something we'll be diving into in this video. Um, F Asset Agents are essential for assets like Ethereum to be brought on to um to flare network so again we'll get into that in a bit so flare is the world's first touring complete federated byzantine agreement network the nodes run the avalanche consensus protocol with a key adaptation to the fba consensus topology so the avalanche consensus protocol they utilize that but with its own twist adapting the fba consensus topology so I just want to explain to you guys what that avalanche consensus protocol is. So basically, only three times in the 45-year-old history of the distributed systems have we had a new family emerge, and avalanche is that brand new family, and has a break, big, massive breakthrough. And it utilizes Satoshi's protocol and combines the best of that with you know the classical uh, system protocol. So it combines both you know speed. And actually, it says it right down here. Combi combining the benefits of Nakamoto and the classical provides robustness, scale, decentralization, and then speed. This is really just referring to Bitcoin and how it, uh, you know, had the decentralization, the robustness, and the scale of it. It was massive, um, and it was revolutionary. And then it came to the classical consensus, like Ethereum, which allowed for speed, quick finality, and energy efficiency. I guess I shouldn't say that. Not really Ethereum. I would say more so like uh, maybe ADA, Algorand, um, but well, actually Ethereum did do that because layer two, um, layer two, li like different blockchains built on top of uh, or networks built on top of Ethereum, kind of like Immutable X or Token Trove, that is considered layer two, and it provides a lot, much more speed, quick finality, and energy efficiency. Um, it is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the uh, the fees you pay in gas to, to mint or buy or sell on layer two. Um, and so, yeah, this is really Bitcoin, this Nakamoto thing, Satoshi Nakamoto, founder of Bitcoin, essentially, or apparently, um, and then combines it with the classical consensus, which provides speed, quick finality, and energy efficiency. So it's a real game changer. And then that is all combined with the federal byzantine agreement consensus topology which is really the federal byzantine agreement is really just a quorum or a set of nodes um that anyone can become a node but it requires you to be able to run a software a certain software that they developed to uh you have to be able to to run that on a 24 7 basis you have to have a 99.9 percent .9%, and this is with other of their blockchains, we have to have, be running that 99.9% .9 of the time in the day. So, not everybody can, but anybody can, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, and like it says here, the principle of it, of the FBA, is blocks are validated if signed by a specified quorum of signers. That is that series of nodes. The speed is high. The DLT or central or distributed ledger technology setup is public or private, can be both. Um, and finality is immediate. So, you know, here's actually, yeah, so here's just to uh, address some concerns with uh, people thinking that it's centralized. And the reason they thought it was centralized is because FBA, UNL networks have been criticized for having their default validators self-selected. So they did select um, validators right out the gate, um, self-selected validators. And so people thought for this, like, okay, so now it's centralized. As it says here, you know, people <laughs> were thinking it's centralized. But... This is totally not the case because Flare innovates on the FBI UNL structure by incorporating miners from all F asset chains to also be the validators on Flare. So all these people, out of this 38 million people, there will be 
validators or miners brought on, well, miners brought on as validators. Um, and so it will not just be their own self-selected people. There will be many others. Um, and this is really just going over the the transactions per second, which is 4,500 for Avalanche, which is uh, huge. And if you ever watch the Songbird Network or the Songbird Explorer, you will see that this, I mean, uh, the transaction speed is fast, 350 milliseconds. Um, and you can go on there, you're seeing transactions happen every second. Um, and then this is for F assets. So basically, the pr this is the process of an asset becoming an F asset. So an asset from, let's say, Ethereum to be brought on to the Flare network. So actually, well, you, it's going to be the XRP ledger to the Flare network. So let's say, here's you, and you want to bring XRP onto the Flare network. Number one, step number one, an a F asset creation request is made to the Flare network. This is processed through the state, state connector to the agent who uses his Flare as collateral to mint XRP or FXRP. Step number two is converting your XRP to FXRP. So here's you. Step number three is once the collateral is reserved, you send your XRP to the agent. So here's you. You send your XRP to the agent who then sends his all that, that transaction data to the state connector. And then upon, upon confirmation of XRP, the system mints FXRP and credits your Flare wallet with it. Um, and just to address the concern of, okay, well, what, what if that agent just decides to run off with my XRP after I send it to them? They won't. It's in their best interest not to because they have to put up the equivalent value of your XRP and then some. So if they were to run off, they'd be losing out. You would get distributed to you the XRP equivalent that they had held. And then that extra collateral would go to, would either be burned or um, would go to the protocol. Um, and so... It is completely against their own interest to run off. And if they do, there's got to be some sort of personal vendetta against you because that would just be ridiculous. I'll call off. So, and to complete the loop, the redemption flow is, so this is just to exchange your FXRP back to XRP. Here you are on the Flare network. You send your FXRP back to the systems. It goes through the state connector to the agent, and the agent sends your original XRP back to your account, and then you have it. Um... And so, yeah, uh, it is worth it reiterating here that the Flare Network will reward you in Spark just by holding an F asset. So that is something for all 38 million wallets to consider, that by converting your assets, XRP, Doge, Algo, etc., to an F asset, you will be earning Spark in the meantime just by holding it, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing, unlocking 65% of value. So just a quick summary. Uh... And some key takeaways, Flare's tech is well suited for use case being Ethereum virtual machine compatible. It solves issues with the POS, proof of stake by utilizing FBA and Avalanche. And number three, the network has the potential to bring dApps to large existing communities, which is a clever growth hack, in Greg's opinion, as they can leverage established user bases rather than having to attract their own from scratch, which is so true. It's, it's genius, man. I mean... <laughs> They are literally, they've built this network, they've built this protocol, and literally just leveraging other communities. I mean, look at this, they're leveraging freaking 38 million people just by creating a bridge between them. Um, but that's the beauty of innovation and of being, of being brand new, of being completely different than anybody else. Um, you definitely re receive the benefits. So that's it for this video. That is part one of three i'll be dropping part two on thursday and part three on friday so if you guys have any questions on this video or found that i did not state something correctly please correct me in the comments um, so we can all learn together and if you do have any immediate questions you can reach me at my email sgcrypto edu at gmail.com or you can simply reach out in the comments and i'll go back to you asap um, or someone else in the community will get back to you which is amazing i love that so that I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. It is beautiful out. Um, I'll catch you in the next one.